previously on balls. Uh, yeah, very, very bizarre kind of 24 hours. Uh, first thing I heard about the Boston Marathon was uh, was good news in that our own Adams van Dijk came in as runner-up uh, in his section in the Boston Marathon. Another successful event for him. But then the rest of it was uh, just all absolute tragedy and disaster as um, two bombs went off uh, much later on. Uh, clearly, obviously planned for when the uh, bigger crowds of people would be coming in and finishing the race. And at this stage, they still have not managed to identify anybody who is responsible and no one has claimed responsibility. We have got uh, Adams van Dijk on the phone now from uh, Boston, uh, no doubt in your hotel room close to the uh, the scene of the tragedy. Yeah, you know, our hotel is, is the race headquarters and um, the whole area just outside the hotel has been cordoned off by the police and it's now an active crime scene. Yeah, and it's, uh, it doesn't see, it's, it, I mean, it hasn't calmed down or anything. I mean, what does it look like over there now? Is it just police and, uh, and, and a lot of journalists and people around there? What's going on? Yeah, it's a very, it's a very strong police presence. Uh, the National Guard has been deployed. You know, there's ATF agents, there's FBI agents, there's CIA agents. It's, it's a very active scene. It's a lot of people, a lot of media, and um, they're doing their job. Yeah. You, I mean, you finished your race. How long before before this went off, Alex? Uh, we started at about 9.17, so about, about 11 we were all done. And then, you know, it was uh, post-race press yeah. and then drug testing. And at around 2 o'clock, I went over to an event that one of my sponsors was hosting. And this event was um, at the Mandarin Hotel, which overlooks that Boylston Street section that yeah. last four or five hundred meters of the race course and um, yeah we were all watching people come in uh, as you know there was about five thousand runners still out on the course and those people are the, the charity runners mm. the fundraisers and they were still out there and a lot of the people running for for my sponsor were also out there and we were waiting for them to come in we heard the first explosion a little bit down the street and what did you think it was when you heard it the first time well you know like like at the conference marathon there's a there's a cannon that goes off yeah. signaling a certain time cut off and and we thought what can it be what kind of you know noise could this have been because that's what it sounded like it sounded like a cannon blast and then we went closer to the window and then the next blast was right in front of the window across the street and it was a huge blast it shook the bowling it shook the windows and I could immediately smell that distinct smell of gunpowder in the air and I saw people down, I saw people who had lost limbs and it was just horrific. Yeah, that's what John was just saying, that apparently you mm. actually witnessed somebody who uh, there and then had just lost their uh, lost their legs. Yeah, you could see it. I mean, the guy was lying half on the pavement, half off the pavement and it was clear there was things missing and it didn't look right. It was, yeah. I mean, just uh, how do you feel now, having having been there, having seen this, and, and particularly, you know, you, you you don't associate this kind of thing with an event like that. You know, we we always look out for the South Africans and how well they're doing in what is basically marathon season overseas. I mean, we've got the London Marathon coming next. Uh, I mean, how do you feel right now? You know, it's it's. I've always thought to myself. A marathon is such an exposed event. Yeah. I mean, it's okay for the runners. We're on the road and it's cordoned off. Every now and then you'll have an idiot you know, run up and try and tackle somebody and stuff like that. But it's relatively safe for the competitors. But I've always thought it's 20, 26 miles, 42 k's of open road where anything can happen. And um, it's one of those things, one of those big fears that, that has come true. And I'm just happy or fortunate that I wasn't, um, you know, still on the road or on yeah. the course when this happened. And it's just, there's nothing you can do. It's it's an open event. It's, yeah. it's the nature of the event. And if somebody wants to inflict this type of damage, they will find a way to do it. And it's it's a sick world we live in. Yeah. The irony is I was, I was going to compete in the Korea, Seoul Korea Marathon in three weeks from now, which is the beginning of May. Yeah. And I cancelled that event because I'm worried about what's going on Security. in North Korea. Yeah. And then, then this it's, happens in Boston. It's... It, Crazy. You know what? Uh, at, uh, I was thinking this morning while I was watching CNN and everything, sort of the you know the drama unfold, and I'm thinking that with the London Marathon, but any marathon, first of all, there there was a lot of security and police there. But it's, as you say, it's an impossible event to police if you're going to allow spectators because it's not like there's one or two entry points to go and watch this event. You can go anywhere along the route, uh, even at the finish. It's difficult to find one particular entry point for every all the spectators to come in you literally walk down to the side of the street and watch the race yeah 
know what I mean? There's, there's, there's buildings next to the course, uh, yeah. especially on that area, and restaurants, and people where people are living, condos and apartments, and uh, it's just so many points. To, it's, it's, it's not possible to secure it. If yeah. somebody wants to do something, they're going to do it. Well, what does that mean for future? Because if, I mean, it's, uh, we've had the idiots running on, as you say, running onto the course. I, I, believe, I remember one of the Olympic Games, there was a, a Brazilian marathon runner who, uh, one of these Spanish uh, pr- protest yeah. groups that ran onto the, the track. It's about as, as serious as it's got. But uh, now that this has happened, you know, any other crackpot organization that now wants to target, whether it's a country who's hosting the race or make a point, will look at this going, well, it's, it's going to be an event that's very difficult to police. Uh, so this could be giving other people ideas as well. And you as an athlete, I mean, thinking about your next race, wherever it might be, would you, you know, will you still carry on doing these? You know, a couple of years ago, I was at the LA Marathon and we had about an hour and a half delay at the start because a suspicious package was found next to the road. Yeah. So this is something that, that I've been living with and, and that I've known as, as a possibility my whole career. And I'm doing the London Marathon on Sunday. And, um, you know, it's it's we can't stop the way we live because there's sick people out there taking opportunities like this. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to find this. I mean, with all the expertise they have on this scene at the moment, I'm pretty sure they'll find these people pretty quick. And it will be interesting to see, you know, what what was the nature of these bombers. Because the bombers were, if you think of, like, the Oklahoma City bombing or the 9-11 bombings, these were relatively small devices, yeah. like you would find at a roadside bombing. And it's, it's not typical of the type of... Al Qaeda, one of those. Yeah. You normally see. Uh, so I'm, uh, I don't know what this was. It will be interesting to see what it turns out to be. But I think this might have been some homegrown <coughs> terror, given the day that the fact that it was Patriots Day. Mm. It might have symbolised something for somebody, and we'll see what it happens. Yeah, uh, as I say, a lot of ball bearings and things uh, that were that were part of this. This is bomb, not a. Yeah. Say not not something that would be um, typical of like an Al Qaeda uh, uh, yeah. attack or something like it, but still very sophisticated in terms of planning yeah. and uh, and and you know timing it as well. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, all those for the last five thousand people, they're all charity runners still yeah. coming in, and they're running, and it's family supporting them, and it's something they will do once in their life because they're running a five six hour marathon, and. Um, those families were, were out there supporting these people. And I mean, it's, it's an eight-year-old boy that died. It's, it's children that has lost arms and legs. It's just, you know, it's just so sick. Yeah, it is. You are going to carry on doing the London Marathon? Yes, I think I'm, I'm, we're all, the whole group of elite wheelchair athletes, that they, they, they put on an event which is called the London Boston Challenge. So yeah. they've combined the Boston and the, Boston and the London Marathons. There's points and a, and a big pool of prize money and all the all the elite wheelchair racers are flying over to, to London tonight on a flight to be there on Sunday. Ernst, I've been very privileged to have completed eight London marathons, but I'd be very honest with you, if I was going to be there on Sunday, I'd be a little bit nervous. Do you think that a lot of people will pull out the average runners there in the wake of what has happened? No, I don't think so. You know, as you would know, to do a marathon is over, yeah. it's, it's about overcoming challenges. Yes. I mean, the New York marathon went on shortly after 9-11. Um, and to the people competing in a marathon, it's about overcoming adversity, overcoming challenge. And I think most people will show up and they will run. Mm. Well, listen, as uh, we, you know, we'd love to be phoning you to say congratulations on, on your second place in the Boston Marathon. Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, unfortunate uh, what has happened afterwards, but we, we do appreciate your time. And uh, I, I just I was curious now, I mean, what happens with, with, the, with the race itself? I mean, that was just there and then. Uh, uh, it's cold and I mean people just scattered in all different directions so you've got a whole lot of people that were running this race almost got to the finish and kind of just wandered off you know going yeah. what the hell happened I mean this is wh- how bizarre this whole scenario is yeah and you know the thing was for, for a short window there they cut all cell phone communication because yeah. they were afraid you know more devices could be set off and people couldn't communicate and couldn't find out if the loved ones are okay or, you know who's fine and who's not fine and it was quite a bit of chaos, um, but I think they, the, the disaster management plans were in place and things took care of themselves and eventually everybody got to each other and sorted yeah. out. All right, and so we appreciate your time uh, chatting to us this afternoon. Apparently a lot of people there and just took people under their wing and just gave them accommodation, people who were like 
20 k's from the end and that sort of thing. And scenarios like this, we saw it with yeah. 9/11 and uh, and other Amazing events like that. That's, that's how people suddenly, uh, you know, just kick in and uh, and just help out their fellow human beings. But really, uh, it's a tragedy, and uh, we just wish you everything of the best. Uh, Alan, uh, travel safe, and uh, yeah, we wish you all the best for the London Marathon as well. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice. Cheers, Alan. Bye bye. There we go. Alan van Dijk, second place in the yeah. Boston Marathon wheelchair race, and uh, saw the events unfold. Witness somebody having their legs blown off. Mm, you can just hear how traumatized he still seems. Yeah, he must be in shock oh, and still numb after. Wit- I mean, you you don't know what it's like unless mm. you witness that. This is Ball's Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate, and John. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central African Time. Balls.co.za